look at Randy Orton slithering. Oh, watch, out, watch, out, watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out! Here's the cover! Seriously though, think about how many medieval kingdoms would have fallen if Charlemagne had an army of these ugly mothers floating around in the 8th century, right? Jabra Scythe Doomstacks are hilarious, by the way, and today I'm going to give you but a taste of the terror they can unleash. Aura of Madness is the big one, of course, the ability that makes this whole strat viable. It's a Mortis effect that drains health from units when their leadership drops below half. And just by itself, it's already good, because when the Jabber launches itself into a squad of infantry, their leadership is going to be dropping anyway. The Beastmen are designed as a shot combat race that preys on leadership, that runs you down. But sometimes, the Body Slams and the Terror aren't enough by themselves. They need that little extra oomph, that little extra push. And that's where Doom and Darkness comes in. That's where Malagor the Crowfather's leadership penalties come in, and of course, the iconic campaign trait Nurgle's Foul Stink. She drops leadership by four region-wide and stacks continuously. So, the basic idea here is that you drop enemy leadership as much as possible, and then when the Ravening Jabber Horde makes contact, everything in the immediate vicinity just starts getting soul-sucked, they tear a route, and entire armies melt away. Against factions like the Skaven, Vampire Counts, low leadership factions that rely on lots of chaff, lots of infantry, this combination is predictably very devastating. We're going to jump into the campaign section of this video in just a second, but to set the stage, I am not going to be stacking Nurgle's Foul Stink here. I personally just don't find it very fun, because you don't get to play battles when everything literally insta routes, which kind of defeats the purpose. It's hilarious the first time, I enjoyed doing it when I first learned about it many dark moons ago, but after that, I don't know, the novelty just kind of wears off, and I'd rather actually fight and kill things than auto win without ever having to click. But we are, of course, still going to try and manipulate morale. This gameplay is from a Torox campaign, where Malagor was my first confederation, and something wicked this way comes is still affecting the entire region, so discipline is still going to be a major issue for Oxyadol and the Three Lizardmen army stopping my way. And when he sees that horde of jabbers come over the mountainside, yeah, there might be some panic setting in. Hope you guys enjoy the battle. Damn, son. Double cheeked up on a Thursday afternoon. Ain't got no right to have that much jabber ass in one army. But we got an issue, because there are three lizardmen armies stomping my way, and... Well, the big thing here is that Mortis Train effect. You guys know it at this point. You'll have seen it already, but... The Aura of Madness. Anytime enemy leadership drops below half, we're draining life from everything in a 40 meter radius, which is great. What has me a little bit worried here are obviously not the skinks. We could pretty much kill an infinite horde of skinks if that was all there was to worry about. It's uh, the fire damage on the other side, and you can see all those salamanders. That could be potentially problematic because both Chaos Spawn and Jabra Slife get regen from the Beastmen tech tree. So that gives us weakness to fire. Jabber Slice are already weak to flame simply because they have low armor. So Salamanders would already wreck them with their bonus for large. So yeah, I mean, there's Ogre Mercenaries, a lot of Red Crescent Skinks, which will, I mean, that army will just murder, but the Sallies, little bit scary here. I'm not gonna lie. Um, so I think what we're gonna do here is, is try and play this smart around the woods if we can. No guarantee we'll get any, but a lot of these Tundra maps tend to have some forest. And we've got Woodsmen on all our stuff. So, Sons of Goros can hunt down some of those Sallies for sure. Chaos Spawn are probably going to get melted. They'll probably die this battle. But, uh, I care more about the Jabbers and keeping them alive. So, we'll see how we do here. But that's a lot of Skinky Boys and a lot of Salamanders to kill. And that should be pretty interesting. Let's jump into a battle and see how we do. You guys ever go out clubbing? I swear you brought home Michelle Pfeiffer and wake up next to this. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, we got a bunch of Jabber Slice on the field today. And I think how we're gonna play it is a Gorbel leading each pack. Got the Vorbergland Broodmother over on this side, that Armor Sundering version. Honestly, not gonna be incredibly impactful from the Armor Sundering perspective here because it's all Skink Cohort and stuff. But it'll be a bunch of different control groups. So Gorbels with each to give them those individual campaign tree buffs and i think i'm gonna try to bait them into this choke point get them a little bit overextended definitely a savage dominion at the start remember we're using malagor and he can fly now it flies so drop some cygor boulders on the army from downtown 
And most important thing in the early stages is isolate the uh, the Razor Dawn and the Salamanders. He's got the speed to close the gap right there. Should be able to shut them down. We'll keep the Chaos Spawn kind of in reserve for the moment. Mm, wow. Wow. Yeah, they do a lot of damage. Sons of Goros took a lot of damage from that. That was painful. Probably should have kept them a little bit further back at the start there. Let's just commit on this first army. Try and catch them with the Pendulum. I'm gonna miss that. They're gonna dodge that. Got some value out of it, but I, I should have waited until they were blind up on the Jabbers. Good thing Malagor had... Oh, no, 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 no. All right, Sons of Goros, you're going to just go hide for now. Looking at how this map laid out, I'm actually not super worried about how the Centigors do. In these choke points, they won't be quite as effective as some of the more open maps. It's a nasty flock of doom. People say they hate Laura Beast in campaign, but... Flock is a great spell. Overcast that, in terms of direct damage, it doesn't get much more cost efficient than that. Slot Mage Priest is maybe a little bit ice. Look at that mass route, dude. I mean, you can do similar things with full stacks of Gorgons and whatever, but you're not gonna get that drain aura. Obviously killing skinks isn't the hardest thing in the world, but there's a lot of them coming my way right now. A lot more to deal with. Okay, so first Savage Minion Summon is gone. Feels bad. I will miss you, Fred, deeply. And I don't want to charge right into it. I kind of, again, don't want to take any fight in a choke point where the Salamanders and Razor Dons can sit in the back and shoot in with a lot of things in front and no way to flank. So I'm going to pull back here. I'm going to let the uh, Vorg Berlin Broodmother move up into the woods. Because remember, everything on the Beastmen side has Woodsmen and the no penalty in Forest trait. So they'll be great over there and they can't be shot over there, more importantly. I'm going to pull them out into this open area, maybe get a, a full surround off if I can. Chaos spawn a little bit out of position right there. That might be a good bait though. Just keep backing up. Not really any massive blobs for Malagor to cast on yet, but that'll happen as soon as the Jabbers go in. All right, baby. Let's get this thing popping like Overrun and Bakker. Move right behind those rocks. Give me a little bit more cover. And yeah, now the Sally is definitely overextended. Malagor also has 140 speed right now. So I can pretty much cast Flock of Dooms from across the map and close in on any sallies to try to get a little bit overextended themselves. Yeah, I think we'll let those four jabbers and the Gorbel fight over there. I think anything that runs after them, they can fight in the trees without too much issue. Let's go in. Razor Dons and Salamanders are top priority. Some of them are running into melee. I don't know what they're doing. It's AI for you. That should be Pendulum Territory, right? There should be something setting up here. Eh. It's not great, but I'll take some damage. Where I can get it. Remember, all you gotta do is drop them below half leadership, and as soon as that happens, Jabber Slife or a Madness kicks in. And that's where the real damage begins. This is where the fun begins. There are Source in there though. Chaos Spawn can't fight that. They have too much too much weapon strength. There's an Ancient Cross Gore Lord in there too, I think. Run down those King Chiefs. Those will actually mess up Jabbers. Those in Oxyadol, who's somewhere here, coming in, come in that second army. Those in the Chameleons are actually an issue. Because we've only got, what, 60 armor base on Jabbers? That is why running them with Gorbals is smart, though. Strength of land, give, giving them more missile resist, giving them more armor. Big pendulum coming in, that's gonna hurt them. Or not. What? That didn't do very much at all. 
All right, they're getting brutalized over in the center. What's happening over here? Salamanders moved into the trees and shooting out of it. Wow, that's actually some next level play from the AI. Let's get the Jabber on top of those Sallies quick. A little bit of damage on my Jabbers over there. Might be feeling a little bit isolated at the moment. But I think all the Salamanders are dead, barring that one unit over in the trees. At least most of them are. Yeah, I didn't really preserve them particularly well. Shocking, I know. Full surround off on that cross score, Lord. Finish him off. Get rid of that slot Mage Priest. Probably a good thing that they don't know how to use regrowth on their own single entities and Earth Bloods on their big swarms of skinks. That could get annoying. But again, if there's an army that's meant for killing hordes of skinky boys. It's a job or Doomstack, man. Another big flock of Doom. I don't know what the enemy leadership is base here. How much I've stacked up. And again, like I said, I don't have Nurdle's Foul Stink. But I do have something Wicked This Way comes, which is minus four. And then I think he can get up to like minus eight on his skill tree. Something like that. Don't have Doom and Darkness either. I'd say that's more important on factions that have kind of middling or solid leadership. It's not as important on skinks. Because they'll start breaking soon anyway. Alright. Pretty soon here, that third army from Oxyal is going to come in. This guy's got beat up a little bit more than I expected. I think I needed to keep them better in the trees. Yeah, that army's coming now. Out of the back of the map. And here come the chameleons too. Okay. This one is the most dangerous of the, the three armies, I believe. This is the one that has Axial. I've not seen him yet. Those King Chiefs link up. That could be a problem. Here we go. I want them to just commit to melee ASAP. So let's get a screening Saigor summon down. Make sure the Sons of Goros are good. Get rid of the source. And charge in with the spawn. Those chameleons are gonna mess up my spawn, though. That's why they're so low right now. Not a very survivable troop. With zero armor or ten armor. Not even with the regen. Remember, you can't actually doom stack in the same way that you used to be able to with Beastmen. But in some ways, you can even more. It's all about dread now. It's not about upkeep. None of your troops have upkeep. So once you have the buildings unlocked, you can recruit stuff. But the only way to raise the unit cap for jabbers or gorgons is through that new dread mechanic that you get from winning battles, raising settlements, doing all that stuff with your... Oh, wow. Oxyato dropping a gnat. Was that Oxyato or was King Chief? Whatever that was, that hurt bad. Not to back up Malagor for sure. But you gotta get a lot of dread to raise the unit cap up to 15 or 20 if you want jabbers. And it goes up. The cost goes up every time you raise the cap. So it can cost later on 2,000, 3,000 dread just to unlock the 17th or 18th Gorgon or jabber. Which could be a little bit painful. Full surround off on the Stegadon. Gorbel should be able to deal with him pretty easily. And for now, I'm going to keep that other wing up in the trees. Leave them there and retreat these guys up the hill if I need to. Yeah. So what we're going to do here, keep them back in the forest. They're not going to hide. They can't hide. They're big, fat, and ugly. But Oxyalo's army wants me. He wants to fight these dudes right now. Right here, right now. So pull back. Force him to turn his back to... The wing up there, and that'll be a full surround, I think. Gotta be a little bit more careful with Malagor. He certainly has enough damage to kill him pretty quick. Spell got cancelled. And the Sons of Goros don't have a way to go down the other side of that cliff, either. Okay. 
Oh, this is perfect. Oh my god. Oh my god, it's gonna be hilarious. I'm so excited. We're going in, baby! There's some ogre mercenaries coming in, too. Well, Flock of Doom, the Blob, get them in from behind. I'm honestly not sure that that wing in the back will get here in time. I think, I think Oxiano might, yeah, he's gonna break. He's gonna break. Oh my lord, that damage. Bro, that was maybe five seconds after the charge. And their entire army is already half HP. And that's not just the skin cohort, that's the salamanders too, that's the ogre mercenaries too. I mean, it's not like this was the most impressive tier 5 army you'll ever see from Oxyadl. A lot of skinks there. The uh, the economic damage I've dealt to him in the campaign has been... Definitely hurt him. He's lost some buildings that would have helped him maybe build some dinos up at this point. But yeah, that was... Uh, I mean, they had... A real player would have inflicted some serious casualties on this Jabber stack. They're all 20% weak to flame. Huge hitbox, low armor, like that's perfect target for salamanders. Where are you going? I want to make sure we get some kills on these ogres. Oh, the RKO! The slam! Oh, that's Oxyadl. Yo, yo, yo. Gorbel. Jabber. Kill city. Put him down for good. He just had his arm ripped off. Oh, another poop. Oh god. They just dropped a massive steaming deuce on him too. Absolutely no shame. You can't take him anywhere. Just filthy animals. And that is the end of Oxyodal. Defecated on by a boobos encrusted blubber filled jabber slife. Ouch. Went into that battle without a single chevron on any of my jabbers. Came out with silver chevs on more than half. 3,000 models slain. Oxyadl on the back foot. I mean, who could have guessed that a swarm of skinks would not perform well against a jabber stack? But I think it gets the point across, right? Oxyadl actually did well at 1,800 damage value, but the rest of it... Uh, salamanders just were not well used by that by the AI. A real player would have probably posed a, an actual challenge here. I mean, I'm not sure they would have won, but I mean, look at the damage value on these dudes, man. They're they're crazy. Like you guys know, you already know that Mortis Engine affects all of them, from the Fey to actual Mortis Engines to Jabbers. Like when you're draining health in an AOE, it's crazy. It does a lot of damage, get a lot of kills real quick. They can literally kill infinite hordes of infantry. It's only if dinos show up that it becomes a problem. Pretty hilarious. Didn't even really use the Doom and Darkness strat side of it. But yeah, I think it's worth trying out. Hope you guys enjoyed. See you in the next one.